Hello everyone and welcome back to Puddles' Place. My name is Puddles and as I told you all about two weeks ago I'm going to go ahead and start recording some videos on leveling a new gnome character from level 1 to 110 and if Battle for Azeroth comes out before I'm done to 120. And even if Battle for Azeroth comes out afterwards I'll still level him from 110 to 120 with you. So I've decided that I'm going to put him on the Skywall server. There's no particular reason for Skywall, except that I like the aesthetic of the Skywall raid, and it just sounds like a cool name. So, as you can see, I have no characters on the Skywall server right now. Um, there are going to be a couple of rules for this, just because... reasons? So, the first rule is, the only heirloom I am allowed to use will be my heirloom weapon. And the second rule is, I cannot send any gold from any other characters i can't buy a token with real money and that sort of thing those are the only rules i'm going to have for this though other than that it's fair game i'm going to try to level through questing but i will do a couple of dungeons here and there just to show you what that's going to look like so like i said it's going to be a gnome and i'm going to make a male and let's do i'm between a hunter and a rogue right now but I'm thinking Hunter. So let's do Hunter. Let's get to customization. Uh, Boom. And there we go. We have a new gnome named Puddles. And let's enter world, and I will be quiet so you guys can listen to the RP. Given the recent political upheaval in Ironforge, the gnomes have suddenly found themselves unwelcomed guests within the city. Leveraging their ingenious technologies and unquenchable spirit for adventure, the gnomes have begun to reevaluate their role within Cosmodon. Under the inventive leadership of high tinker Gelbin Mechatork, the gnomes now plan a daring campaign against the barbarous Trolls to retake their former capital of Gnomeregon. With the odds stacked against them, the gnomes are counting on brave heroes such as you to stand and be counted. Your people's greatest hour draws near. And we are back. So I'm going to just change something on my UI here because I really like a really small font. Cool. So. Well, what I'm looking at right now is there's a quest giver right in front of me. You can always tell there's a quest giver by this giant yellow exclamation point above their head. And if you don't see anyone right in front of you, I'm kind of over. Let me move over a little bit. You can see on the mini-map there, there's an exclamation point. It's kind of small. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video. Let me just... Uh... Okay, I don't think that helps any, but no. So let me go over some movement controls here real quick. Uh, Q and E strafe. W and S are forward and back, A and D pivot, or you can hold down right click and twist to pivot, or hold down left click and right click to move, and you can move with your mouse. So let's begin by picking up this quest. To do that, I left click on him, or you can right click. You can read this text here if you want. This is mainly RP stuff. What's really important to you is the stuff down here. Under the quest objectives is what you have to do. And then, of course, your rewards for completing the quest. And then you hit accept. And you see now he has a silver question mark above his head. That means that he has given you a quest or he is the person to turn your quest into. But you have not yet completed the objectives yet. Um, as I said, I'm going to be using a single heirloom weapon. I will be using an heirloom uh, gun. So let me see here. Doop, 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 boo. Where are you? I guess I'm going to be using the heirloom bow. No, I know there's a gun. Whatever. Bow it is. Cool. 
Now, we begin our first attack. Since I am technically a melee character, even though I'm a hunter, wow, that bowstring looks cool, or interesting, um, I can just simply right-click an enemy and it will auto-attack. This is a very weak attack, but it is still an attack. And the next one I'm gonna actually use stuff. So down here you see I got a bunch of buttons. Most of them are empty right now, but I do have something under one called Cobra Shot. Those are my abilities. Those are my main abilities that I'm gonna be using through most fights. So if I click this guy again and hit one, you see that does a lot more damage than just basic auto attack. And I am a ranged character, so I can attack from a distance. There are some, well, I think it's about half and half. Maybe a little more melee heavy. There are some characters that are melee, and so they have to be up close to the enemies to attack them. Uh, those would be classes like warriors, rogues, monks. However, with uh, hunters, they are rangers, so you can just shoot them from a distance. Now, he gave me a quest that I do not turn into him. As you can see, I got a little question mark on the map here. Or, if I zoom in enough, you see there's a yellow arrow there pointing me to where I need to turn in the quest. So we will just go over there to turn it in. Now this one we have to interact with someone and use an item. So we're going to interact with these people who have the yellow outlines. And we're going to use the item right here called Teleport Beacon. Whenever you're on a quest with an item normally, it will pop the item right there next to the quest text. And you just left click it and you teleport them out. And we got to do that six times. As you can see, the count is incrementing. So every time we teleport someone, it went from one to two. It also shows up on big yellow text right in the middle of, your, well, top of your screen. And now that that quest is done, we just walk back to him. And I say, yo, what up? Complete quest, and he's going to give us another one, which we accept. And I just leveled up. So when you see big yellow explosion sort of thing go above you, it levels you up. Nowadays, if you have a pet, such as a hunter or a warlock pet, it will also level up your pet. Um, it didn't used to do that. It does now, though. When you level, you gain access to new spells, and your um, ability scores increase. Um, by a decent amount. I don't know the exact numbers, but they do increase. Now this quest, you have to enter a vehicle. These vehicles right here. So when you see this giant green arrow, it means you can enter a vehicle. So just left click, and away you go. So while I'm going through this, let me take you through a couple of screens here. If you hit C or press your face down here, you get it into the character info screen. It shows you all your armor, your weapons, and your attributes in addition to your titles, which I'm going to have. Uh, let's do the Fabulous. Puddle's the Fabulous. Uh, equipment Manager becomes available at 15 when you get access to um, specs. And you also have Reputation under here. You're not going to need to worry about that yet. I said a couple of screens. I guess it's just going to be one screen, though. So, oh well. And then we talk to this guy to go to the surface. Now, sometimes, and this quest is every time, sometimes you'll turn in a quest, and it'll say com that you've completed it down here. You gained the experience. You gained the gold, or in this case, the copper. But it doesn't go away. If that happens, just hit X up here. And then talk to them again to get the next quest. Simple as that. And we're going to turn in this quest. He actually gave us some gear, so let's take a look at that. 
Um, he gave us a gun, which because I have an heirloom weapon on, it's not going to be any better than my current one. But this is the one that I started with, so I'll equip that. As you can see with Pawn, there's a little arrow. Pawn being one of the add-ons that I recommended in my previous video. And as you can see, it's a 50% upgrade. This one's 113% upgrade. If you do not have Pawn installed, though, you can simply mouse over it, hold down Shift, and it'll show you the difference, such as this reliable Boomotronic has half a damage per second more than my old Blunderbuss, but I'm going to use my Charmed Ancient Bow, which is 1.3 damage per second higher, and eventually it'll give me some secondary stats. So that's going to be it for this video. In my next video, I'm going to be doing more quests. Hopefully I can get out of Nomergon. I make no promises, though. So I will see you in the next video.